I got a disturbing email from one of my key subscribers. She was concerned that maybe she was an outcast. She was away from the herd. She thought maybe investing in silver and gold was a bad idea because nobody else talks about it. Nobody does it. So are you bad? Are you a rebel because you buy silver and gold? Or maybe are you one of the smart ones? Isn't that usually the case? In hindsight, we look back and the people that are smart, the people that are making wise moves to protect themselves, to protect their families, which is what you're doing with silver and gold, right? They're usually not with the herd, almost exclusively. They've moved away from the herd. Do you feel like you've moved away from the herd? You can leave, you can leave a comment in the comment section. I want to hear from you. But are you making a smart move? And we're going to talk about that. We're also going to cover Silver Squeeze 2.0 briefly, because that might also make you, the silver investor in particular, look real, real smart in the coming near future. We can't go any further without talking about what's going on on a high level with silver and gold. Guys, it's going to have a major impact on the price as we move into the coming months, quarters, and years. I'm optimistic, and I'm going to share with you why in this video today, July 4th, 2023. It's a holiday. Let's dig right in right now. So you're a gold and silver stacker, and nobody else you know except us, right? In our community, the enthusiast. You are a gold and silver enthusiast, right? It's 9 a.m. Central Standard Time on the 4th of July. You're hanging out in the basement because we love to talk about silver and gold, but it's easy to feel like an outcast. I got an email from one of the viewers. She was concerned. I'm not going to share her name for confidentiality purposes, but she said when she goes to family functions, when she's talking to her friends at work, her neighbors, everyone looks at her like she's crazy. And she said, are we crazy, Ron? Are we crazy? Well, I want to talk about a couple of reasons why maybe we're not. Today is the 4th of July, the day that the United States claimed their independence, right? And on top of that, they came up with a little document called the United States Constitution. In the Constitution, it doesn't talk about the gold and silver price, which we know should be much, much higher but the Constitution does specifically state that silver and gold are the only real forms of money. Take a step back, guys. What's the most respected, reviled document in the history of the United States, which is still, we're working on changing this, right? But isn't the United States still the most powerful and richest country in the world in this document? The Constitution explicitly says gold and silver are the only forms of real money. Shouldn't that alone mean that we would have a higher silver and gold price? But our politicians, our fearless leaders, in particular over the last 50 years, and this is not going to be a history class, but have moved away from the backing of the U.S. currency with real money, silver and gold. Imagine, guys, imagine. I know it's hard for us to remember but before 1971, our money was backed by silver and gold. Do you think, do you think maybe when you look back then up until 1970, in 1970, the middle class was doing pretty darn good. It worked really, really well. So as we feel like outcast at times, and we do, right? We are away from the herd. We have to remember our founding fathers who are often referred to as genius for the Constitution that they put together. They wanted us to use silver and gold. You're doing what your founding fathers wanted you to do, right? Hamilton, I think it is, wrote the Constitution, the father of the Constitution. Silver and gold investors, we, for that reason alone, maybe shouldn't feel like we are such rebels and, and uh, away from the herd, like we're not part of the group that sits around with their paper money and their electronic money and maybe even their bitcoins and says, look, I got, look at all this pay. I don't even, I need to get some paper money down here. I have got paper money. I've got paper money. Thank you for the super chat. Wow. That's super awesome. Thank you. Who is that? Ron. Now, on top of that, you get bonus points because you got just probably one of the best first names ever. Thank you. 
Not expected, always appreciated. Now, but let's remember, guys, right? All those other, the other people, the group, they're all looking at their unicorn, fart dust, paper money, electronic money. They think they have something of value. Our founding fathers told us, and we know we have something of value. That's important for us to remember. And let's just touch on this because we don't talk about this enough and it's going to happen again last year or earlier this year i should say we had a massive wave hello wayne huff thank you for being here first time in the chat hey guys please give this video a thumbs up that really helps us get the word out and if you haven't subscribed you want to come i want you to come back i can't say you want to but i hope you want to come back you're welcome here we're a group of people that are like-minded yet we often disagree just read my comment section and that's good because within our little group it's good that we disagree because that's how we can learn I learn when you disagree with me and I say, you know what? I didn't think of it that way. So please uh, come back, subscribe to the channel. I'm sorry, I got off track. Big news this year, massive news in the United States, a wave of states attempted and some were successful at passing legal tender legislation. So think about this. Your founding fathers, they put it in the Constitution. States are concerned about the stability of the U.S. dollar. They're taking moves to allow their citizens. That's you. How do you feel about it? Do you live in a state that passed legal tender legislation? Maybe you live in Kansas, Utah, Texas, Tennessee. There's like, I don't know, 16 of them now. It's a wave. Missouri, it didn't work, but it's going to work next year. They're, they're passing laws to let you not claim your right, right? Not claim your right to use gold and silver as money. Reclaim, because you should have never lost it. It's like you're going to the lost and found, right? It's like you go to... You go to the amusement park with your kid and you lose your favorite uh, baseball hat, right? You go back to reclaim it. It was yours to begin with. And it was your right to use silver and gold. On the Independence Day, we got to talk about that. We got to recognize. So as you feel like you're, like you're not part of the, you know, the people that sit around and watch mainstream media all day and believe whatever their talking box tells them what they're supposed to believe, it's okay, right? And remember also, how do you feel about this? When you look back at like periods like the Great Depression, right? The Kennedy family made all their wealth during that period. They went against the herd, right? It's painful to go against the herd, but when you know you're right, when you believe it, and if you believe it, look, I'm not telling you what to believe. You believe what you want to believe, but the thesis for a much higher silver price and gold price we know it is strong we know it is for real okay and don't forget if you ever need support you can always come here ron's basement you're a basement dweller you're welcome here and we can support each other hello douglas haley hello numismatic good to see you gene richards from washington state right here guys let's go ahead and open this up and see if gene sent me a little gift let's go ahead and open it up see what's in there smells smells a little funny i wonder what's in here you guys what it kind of smells like like a like a like a like like a like a toot that uh maybe came from somebody that ate many different colors look at this he sent me a two dollar bill which i have to admit i have an affinity for two dollar bills i don't know why i always have but it smells like unicorn fart dust. Thank you, Gene. On a serious note, I do love $2 bills. Thank you. What else do we have in here? All right, I'm lying. I opened it last night. I know what's in here. An awesome coin from Austria. I want to show you this side. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? It's like a little guy on a horse. I was reading about this coin last night. I think it was the 825th anniversary of the Austrian Met. On this side, I don't know if you can see that. That's Robin Hood. There you go. I think you can see that. And I happen to like Robin Hood. We're kind of like Robin Hood. Thank you, Gene. That is an awesome gesture. I'm putting it right over here to my left by the bell with the other silver coins that I've gotten from viewers. This is one of my favorites, of course. Look at this Indian. And then no more show and tell, I promise. 
We're going to get back to why gold and silver need to be much higher. Can you see that? That is from Coin Shop. Chris, always warms my heart. These little big, these little pieces of silver are a big deal to me. Hey, Annie Oakley. Hello, Snakebite. Hey, you know what? It wouldn't be. Look at this. One last show and tell. This was from Snakebite. You see that? See that unicorn? It's a unicorn. Isn't that beautiful? Look at that. Wow, the camera, I think, really has it good. That is from Snakebite, another one of my favorites. These, and look at this. Boy, you guys are pretty awesome. It's a one-ounce bar. I think that's one of my only one-ounce bars. For some reason, I don't have a lot of one-ounce bars. That came from my friend in California. All right, no more show and tell. Hello, Generic Stacker. Hello, Neil from Neil Hahn Dynasty. Neil is now a moderator, and thank you, Neil, for doing that. It helps with the channel, and I'm greatly appreciative. Let's not forget about this guy. Huh? Susie dressed him up with a big bow tie. Where'd the silver bear go? Well, anyway, $2,500 gold is when we take the blindfold off the bear. Big, big party. You will be invited, okay? And when we have $2,500 gold, guys, we're gonna have uh, we're gonna have silver above 50. Let me ask you: When we get the blindfold off the bear, where do you see the price of silver? I'm ready. $2,500 platinum, and we are gonna get a platinum bear for our friend Neil. I'm working on it. You know, I have many bears to choose from upstairs. I have twin 11-year-old daughters. Okay, guys silver there's a big movement right now going on could you imagine silver getting squeezed i know i know but let's remember it happened just back in what february of 2021 the silver squeeze will it happen again can it happen again the guys at the silver degen club on reddit r-e-d-d-i-t silver degen like silver degenerate are putting together a movement to drain the mint by people buying current year American Silver Eagles to force the mint. Now, here's something super interesting I learned yesterday. I have an interview coming out this afternoon with the Illuminated Ape, who's a big part of the brains behind what goes on at the Silver Degen Club. Super smart guy. The U.S. Mint is not keeping up with demand for American Silver Eagles. And I always hear it's like, well, it's because we can't get planchettes. Planchettes are the blanks they use to make the American Silver Eagle. It's like a, like a, it's like a coin or a round that's just completely blank. And they run it through a press and they make the coins. And everybody says, oh, the American U.S. Mint can't get enough planchettes. They only buy them from the Sunshine Mint. And I thought I was wrong. I was like, well, how does this work? You know, well, if the Sunshine Mint can't provide them, uh, then, then, then they won't, then it kind of makes sense. I didn't realize. I thought the Sunshine Mint would buy the silver, make the planchets, make the blanks, sell them to the Mint, right? No. The U.S. Mint directly buys the silver themselves, provides the silver to Sunshine Mint. Sunshine Mint then converts that into blanks. So there's no reason why the U.S. Mint can't buy the silver, right, that they need to buy to make all of these American Silver Eagles. And if they are forced to address this, right, if people come together and force the U.S. Mint to address this, that could and that's the theory behind this movement, be a catalyst for the Mint to have to say, okay, we're going to buy them, and that could be a, uh, a situation that creates a huge demand for silver and gold. But let's think about this when it comes, how do you feel about this when it comes to the silver and gold price? It's been hanging in there, guys. Under, let's say, a non-black swan event, right? A horrific event that occurs. Another big banking crisis. Gosh, we hope not a escalation in violence and war uh, within the world, right? So under a, none of, under a non-black swan event situation, silver price and gold price doing pretty good right now. Let's just say they keep everything chugging away for a while here. Even under the best of circumstances, the silver price and gold price are doing okay. Nowhere near where you think they should be or I think they should be. 
But even under that situation, the financial condition of the United States is so screwed up that we know, you know, right? Do you know? I mean, if you looked at the numbers, $32 trillion in debt, credit card debt at all times, highs, we know that even if there's not a black swan event, a higher price will inevitably, it's mathematically impossible for there not to be a much higher price for silver and gold. Now, this is where it gets interesting. It gets interesting because if under the best of circumstances, without black swan events, we're in good shape. What if we have a big event? What if we have a food crisis? What if we have an oil crisis? What if we have an escalation in violence in the world? What if we have a banking crisis? Jerome Powell says he's going to raise interest rates. Well, the banking system's already under a lot of heat. We might get a lot more of the bank corn kernels popping if rates do indeed get raised much higher. <coughs> Excuse me. If we do have this black swan event, and there's a lot of swans circling, we could see a massive uptick in the price of silver and gold, period. Big money. What's the big money doing? Last week, Coin Shop Chris generously shared with us the fact that we had a he had a million dollar sale at his shop. Okay, I'm hearing other bullion retailers continue to talk about large purchases. What is that telling us? What's the big money? What's the smart money doing? So at a retail level, we have that the Comex and the LBMA. The COMEX, right? The United States, the electronic market for gold and silver, right? Their vaults are being drained. The LBMA in London, England, where they determine the electronic price of gold and silver. Their vaults are being drained. What does that tell you? Because that's big money. That's institutional investors. Those are thousand ounce bars. And we know there's 28 right now, 28 claims on each one ounce of silver there, right? Like only three and a half percent of the people that think they own silver, that have a contract on that silver, only three and a half percent of them could actually get their silver. Less than four percent. What is that telling us? Okay. Uh, the LBMA during the silver squeeze to now, now they have 25% of the silver now that they had then during the silver squeeze in their vaults. It's crazy. Let's go to the chats, guys. Let's see what's going on. Comex is a cartel. Yes. Coin Shop Chris, thank you for being here. <coughs> Snakebite, my friend, good to see you. Richard Cooper says the house of cards will fall. And yes, um, it can be painful waiting. Like the email I talked about earlier in the, in the video, guys, it can be, is it hard for you sometimes? It can be hard for me, right? This is challenging. Um, John Little, if you guys watched the interview I did with him, he said like, you know, it's, it's what we're doing can be really difficult. Okay. Um, a Stuart Englert, the guy that wrote the book on the manipulation of silver, he said, yeah, it's going to happen. <coughs> Excuse me, my allergies are acting up. It's going to happen. However, he said, I've been waiting 15 years. It's not going to take another 15 years. Could it? Look, I don't have a crystal ball. Possibly. Yes, it could. Will it? Probably not. Okay, probably not. Probably not. When we talk about when we talk about the silver price and the gold price, what's the other big factor we can get excited about? We know the institutions are buying silver and gold. We know you are buying silver and gold. You are making a decision to be your own central bank. Whatever silver you own, right? Like this 10 ounce bar that I own, there's no counterparty. You are your own central bank. I am my own central bank. We know that the states in the United States, the individual states 
are taking moves to allow their citizens to reclaim their right to, to use gold and silver as legal tender. That's happening right now. We know also that countries around the world are buying silver and gold. The most sophisticated institutions in the world. The world central banks are buying gold, we know, because that statistic is published. We know India, and there's going to be some interesting news I've got from an inside tip <coughs> coming out about India here in the next few months. Hold on, okay? Especially when it comes to silver. So we know the big advanced, sophisticated central banks. Why are they buying gold? Why are they buying gold, right, at a rate that they haven't since 1965? And in 1965, let me remind you, have you considered we were on the gold standard? It's very interesting. Plant the silver seed. Give someone an ounce of silver to get them started. That's a great recommendation, Carl. Sorry, I have to keep muting you guys. I have uh, seem to have been hit with a coughing attack. I apologize. I apologize. How about this? What does it mean, silver, alone? Silver can get squeezed so easily. Silver can get squeezed so easily. Yes, I'm wearing my orange shorts. Again, I'm sorry. I shouldn't show you that. Silver can get squeezed so easily. And you want to know why? Think about this. Is the silver market tiny? Right? To us, it's huge. Right? To us, it's... But relative to other markets, where does the silver market fit in? Annual silver production. $20 billion. 1 billion ounces at, let's say, 23 bucks. 23 billion. Roughly $20 billion. Okay? How does that compare to gold, for instance? Gold, 200. Gold is 10 times bigger, 200 billion. How does that, how does that, let's just think about oil. Another, I mean, silver is critical for manufacturing, for money, for the defense industry, for solar, for electric cars, for batteries, all that stuff. You know that, right? It's critical. So is oil. Oil's critical. Oil is 100 times bigger. So, 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 generic stacker asks, can the squeeze last? Yes, I'm going to talk about that. But when we look at the size of the silver market, it is tiny. Look at the size of the silver market compared to the market capitalization of a company like Apple Computer. It doesn't make any sense. The good news is there's a lot of runway when something small it's a heck of a lot easier for it to get a lot bigger. It's a lot easier for silver to go from $23 to $84, right, than it is for it to go from $84 to, let's say, $320. It'll do it. It'll happen. Trust me. I don't know how old I'll be. Maybe I'll be in on a wheelchair saying that, but it will happen because we're going to have to move. Oh, there's the silver bear. There he is right there. His blindfold says $85. We are going to have that party. We are going to take that blindfold off, and then we're going to have to put a new number on there, and I'm thinking it's going to be somewhere in the 300s. How would you like it if the government came and confiscated your precious metals? Whoa, right? Came and took your gold. Came and took your silver. And I was talking to the illuminated ape yesterday. The guy, the brains, right? The brainchild behind a lot of what goes on at the Silver Deegan Club. And, and he agreed with this. Uh, and we talked about this in the interview. You don't really have to worry about gold confiscation. Okay, I'm not putting words in his mouth, uh, and if I have this wrong, he can comment and let me know. You don't have to really worry about gold. Silver is a different story, and we're going to talk about that. But when it comes to gold, think about this. When Roosevelt confiscated gold in 1933, he did that because we were on a gold standard, and they needed more money. It's really, do you know what they did? They took everybody's gold, paid them 20 bucks an ounce, and then once they had all the gold, 
they went and revalued it much higher so that now they had more gold and they had valued it much higher. They essentially printed money when they did that. That was their way, but they had to have the gold back then to do it. Now, they don't need gold to print money. The, right? Uh, I, I think. Hold on. Let's get him out. This old boy. This old boy right here. He's proven that to you. Everybody say hello to Jerome. Hello, Jerome. Okay. He doesn't need gold. He doesn't need your gold to print money. As a matter of fact, he can print money and buy gold. And that's the bald guy money brought that up. It was, a, I think, a genius point that he brought up. The world central banks don't need to confiscate gold because all they got to do is print money and buy it, right? Of course, they're devaluing the currency. But what about silver? Do you need to be concerned about your silver? And Illuminated 8 brought up a great point, right? I think possibly if we're going to be concerned about precious metal confiscation from a strategic perspective we have to be more worried about silver because silver is so necessary for many industrial applications but also the defense industry some people are estimating that the defense industry uses almost 20% of all the silver that's produced every year. The amount of it that goes into the batteries that are needed for a lot of these defense-related products, the bombs, the missiles, it's astounding, okay? And it's very difficult to actually quantify it. But, but based on some very solid research and understanding, it looks like the defense industry is one of the major, major users of silver that nobody talks about okay so really do the governments need to confiscate your gold well let me let me throw in a caveat into that one okay possibly if if the world let's just say this big BRICS summit coming up on august 22nd where now everybody is saying everybody is saying they're going to announce the new reserve currency and that it'll likely be backed by gold let's say the BRICs continue to gain power. They continue to, um, uh, and they continue to back their currency with gold. They could force, right? It, isn't the world always on a gold standard anyway, right? I mean, haven't we determined that? John Exter, the ex-Federal Reserve Governor, Exter's Pyramid, go read about that. It's very interesting. He worked for the United States Federal Reserve. He said gold and silver are the only forms of real money. He said gold and silver are the base of everything. Maybe, maybe it's just been a little mirage, a monetary mirage, pulled off by these world paper, debt-creating, electronic money, unicorn fart dust, whatever you want to call it, right? It's, a, it's a, been a mirage. Gold and silver, right? They're sitting over there in the corner. Look over in the corner of your room. Visualize a little pile of gold and silver. They've been there the whole time. There's only so much gold and silver in the crust of the earth. They've been valuable for 5,000 years, so haven't we always been on a gold and silver standard? So what I'm saying is, when it comes to gold confiscations, silver too for that matter, if the world begins to re-recognize, is forced because of, uh, what's that word, Grisham's Law or something like that, 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 that eventually everything filters back to the real money. If and when that happens, guys, Okay, if and when that happens, that could be a scenario where not just the U.S. central bank and government, but other central banks and governments could potentially move to request that the citizenry turn in their gold and silver. Right now is the time. Please, if you haven't, I, I need to get to 100 thumbs up. Come on, guys, please. It makes me happy. We're at 79. If you, if, you, if you could please press the thumbs up button, that would really help me and really help the channel. That would be a big favor. It'd be a 4th of July present to Ronnie and Ron's basement. And if you haven't subscribed, please do so. Like I said earlier, a new piece of content every day, always related to your in mind. Is your favorite subject gold and silver? It certainly is one of my favorite subjects. That would be awesome. I want to now. Now's your now's your chance. You're smart. You've got a good brain. I'm going to address 
whatever you want me to address in the comment section right now. Fiat is toilet paper, Gene Richards. Yes, I agree. Turkey Mountain Stacker. Hello, Coin Shop Chris. The world is watching TikTok. Be kind, helpful, and grateful. Yeah, I agree, Neil. Great words of advice. Jamie Hinnick, you're new to me, I believe. Thank you for being here, Jamie. You've got a question. Ron, they cannot print money. They can only print currency. Thank you. Gold and silver are the only real money. Coin Shop Chris likes to say gold and silver are the only forms of real money. Everything else is just unicorn fart dust. And there's our unicorn right there. Everybody say hello to the unicorn. We got 100 thumbs up. That means 10 ringling dinglings of the bell. One ring for all 10 likes. That's ringflation. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, you can't see it. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Sorry, it's been a little crazy here this morning. We're getting ready to go to a... There's the bell. <clears throat> Invisible pink unicorn fart test money. Yes, thank you. Every war, number one, steal their gold. Yes, we know that's the case, right? Anytime there's a world conflict, anytime one country takes over another country, isn't it interesting that the first thing they do is take the gold? Isn't it interesting, right? Yes, it's very interesting. Neil, Han Dynasty says, when Nixon took us off the gold standard, they just stole Germany's gold. Think about it. Yes, great point, Neil. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Military demand will cause mine confiscate. Oh, good, okay, I like that, Stacker. That's a good point. That's a great point. Military demand could cause the confiscation from the mining industry. Did I get another super chat? I thought I did. Thank you, yes. Hey, Chuck. Hey, thank you, Chuck Robertson. Happy 4th of July to you as well, my friend. Ron, have you seen Money Masters? No. Um, no, I have not. I'll have to check that out. I pro probably did at some point over the years, but I'll have to check that out. Oh, boy. So we know that our good friend Buddy Rumble, the Louisiana gold guru, he called, what, $30 silver? by January, we're going to hold him to it because this guy predicted the current gold and silver prices eight weeks ago. He's saying $30 by January. Let's talk about silver, and I want to say your name. Tell me again, where do you see silver early January of 2024? Put it in the comment section. Do it right now. We the people do not agree. Throw CBDC and their creators in the garbage. Yes. Thank you, Coin Shop Chris, for being here and all that you do. Coin Shop Chris, what a friend. Coin Shop Chris, he's 3396. Snake bite, 2750. I'll take that, snake bite. Andrew is with uh, Buddy Rumble, 30. One guy, 2750. Low blood pressure. $22. Brian, $32. Richard Cooper, $30.69. TP Leatherworks, $27 to $28. We're going to call that $27.50 if my math is correct. Fast landing. <laughs> Woo, brother. You will be here in the basement with me partying if we get that fast landing. $120. $41 for John. We like that. Bill, Bill Still is still out there. New channel. Okay. Generic Stacker, 26. Um, Neil gave away 100 ounces of silver last year. That's awesome. Metabol, 33. TD, 2750. Kenneth, Frank Zwix, 4250. Yes, I kind of like that one too, my friend. Carl, 2550. Neil is awesome, Louie. I agree. Neil and Coin Shop Chris are two great guys. Neil's the platinum guru. Coin Shop Chris helps so many people. Mark Gottschall per, uh, uh, refuses to make a prediction. Scott W., let's see what happens on August 22nd. Yeah, let's talk about that. $40. Australian, my friend Daryl. Neil tries to wake people up. Gonzo, come over and wake my 11-year-old daughters up, Neil. That would be, uh, I, they, they like baseball cards. I think oh, it's even worse than paper money, right? 
Gonzo 30. LOL. Silver shot. Yes. <laughs> I got a little bag. Look at this. I love this. Silver shot. Little pieces of silver balls. Interesting. Yeah, let's talk about uh, August 22nd. That's the big day. That's the bricks. People are smart people. James Rickards, you know James Rickards' background? The guy, he's smart. Some people are saying, oh, he's a shill. He's this. No. I listened to James Rickards talk to Rick Rule the other day. James Rickards is a smart guy. He has held many high-level, I'll leave it at that, government-related positions. He speaks the truth, and he, he's saying that we're going to get a gold-backed digital currency uh, during this. Uh, uh, somebody just came downstairs. Oh, hi, Susie. Everybody say hi, Susie. She's going. We're getting ready to go to a parade. She's getting some laundry out of the dryer. This is real, folks. This is a real working basement. Those are real fireworks. Uh, but James Rickards is calling for, and I'll be up in just a few minutes, Susie, okay? You want to say hi to everybody? I don't know if you heard that or not. The microphone picked it up, but Susie said hi and every help. Oh, hey, they love you, Susie. Oh, I love you guys. I love Susie too. Um, uh, what a great and a great help. Man, everybody's saying hi to Susie. I think Susie and Coin Shop Chris are a little more popular than I am here in the basement, but this is Ron's basement, but this is YouTube. There is no Ron's basement without you. I want you to stop right now for one second and realize, right, the miracle that we're alive, number one, but that we're all together by Susie Bye. on the 4th of July talking about silver and gold. You guys are all over the world, okay? But you're you, and you're unique, and you're special. And that's a big, 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 big deal, okay? Like Neil said, you know, I'm going to this neighborhood 4th of July party. Nobody's going to want to talk about silver and gold with me. But you know what? I'm going to try to say five nice things to people. Because some of my neighbors, um, I'm sure I bug them, but a few of them bug me as well. Now, back to James Rickards. It's not just him. There was an article on the BRICS website I was reading the other day. Everybody's talking about how this new BRICS reserve currency will be backed by gold. It could, August could be huge, right? Just because they're not talking about it on, when I wake up in the morning, I'm very crabby. Okay. I just have to be honest. And I'm less crabby <laughs> throughout the rest of the day. But Susie watches the damn Today Show and I sit in the other room and then one of my ears hears what's going on. They aren't talking about silver and gold. They aren't talking about the big bricks, meaning they're not talking about de-dollarization, okay? They're not. They're not. But that's a good thing because it's not a real palatable subject for the American public, right? They want to hear about some shootings, which are horrible, or whatever else is going on. The only time I've heard the Today Show talk about silver and gold is when they were talking about the, the Russian mafia and the Wagner group taking over gold mines and using gold in Africa. You know, it's always negative about gold. You ever notice that? It's always criminals. It's always gangsters. It's always pirates, right? We aren't taught about silver and gold in the United States. We aren't. And when we are, we get negative messages. The rest of the world's different. We've covered that ad nauseum. They're the opposite of us. They all know the big benefits. They love silver. They love gold, right? And guess what? When the bricks come out, this could be huge. This could be huge. This could be the black swan of black swans that come along. Okay, hello, Carl from Kentucky. I love Kentucky. It's not too far from here. You guys ever been to Kentucky? If not, you might want to consider visiting Kentucky. It's a beautiful state. But back to gold and silver. I apologize. I'm wandering. Now you need to check. Maybe there's a carbon monoxide leak down here or something. I don't know. But but August 22nd, guys, this could be a huge day. Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa, Saudi Arabia, Argentina, and about 28 other countries binding together 
tired. The president of Brazil said when he goes to bed every night, he said this as a quote, when he goes to bed every night, he wonders, why do we have to use U.S. dollars? The world is rebelling against the dollar. The world is going from the dollar to gold, right? The Saudis are selling oil outside of the U.S. dollar. That's the petrodollar. We could have another 45-minute discussion about that. You, you think people don't know a lot about silver and gold in the United States. T trust me, when I go to the neighborhood swimmy poo this afternoon and I'm sitting there, if one of the neighbors that I don't really want to talk to starts talking to me, I'll start talking about silver and gold. It's like bug spray. They go away. It's like a mosquito. They leave. If that doesn't work and you need to pull out the atomic bomb, start talking about the petrodollar. Because that just people are like, what? I don't understand. I'm petrodollar. I buy gas at the mobile station. <laughs> oh, brother. No bricks. Yeah. Ah, very interesting point. I don't watch CNBC very, very little. Late and during the summer, maybe about five minutes a week. So I pre I, I appreciate that height on drifter. Neil says America has more oil than the bricks combined. Yes. We just aren't allowed to drill it. Carl says, Hey Ron, beautiful state. Horses bourbon. What more do you need? <laughs> you don't want me on bourbon. <laughs> or a horse for that matter. I'll tell you a story about Kentucky when I got a whole new respect for horses, guys. Uh, my roommate in college was from Lexington. We would go to the Kentucky Derby every year. And his best friend from high school owned a horse farm. Big money, man. I mean, like a thoroughbreds. Um, so it was a big deal, and we would get to sit on the barn, across when the barns across where they kept the horses, across from the grandstand, and then uh, walk on the track in between races and go over to the grandstand. Anyway, after the they had big deal uh, Derby Day, they called it. Never rains on Derby Day, although it did a few times. Nonetheless, we're at the Kentucky Derby. I've drank a lot of bourbon, beer, anything. I used to drink. We go after the Kentucky Derby to this guy, Joe. Um, I think it was called Brookdale Farms. And I think he still owns it. I looked. But anyway, it's been 20, 30 years. And they're having a big party at this horse farm. Fancy. Really cool. We get on some UTVs. Like, oh, let's go out. I'll show you some of the horses. We go out to the horses. And I'm standing at this fence. And there's a mother horse and a baby horse. Whatever they're called. Fold. <coughs> and I don't know what happened. But the mother horse got mad, and I've never been so scared in my life. Those are massive animals. I mean, the mother horse like kind of jumped up, and I thought I thought I was gonna die. Um, so I don't uh, I don't I don't drink anymore, um, and I certainly gained a great respect for horses that day. Kind of like us silver and gold investors, right? We jump up, no problem. We the people are dollar creating your own bank. Yes, yes. If you stack silver, if you stack gold, you are your own central bank. Remember that. Remember you're a good person. And remember, I'm going to look forward to seeing you again. Thank you, Coin Shop Chris. Thank you, Neil, for helping out on this live stream. Guys, everyone be well, be safe, okay? I appreciate you. Thank you. And I'll see you soon.